So now I'm going to take a look at the horn timber here. The horn timber is the timber on the center line. That's between the garbage planks and not to be confused with the kill because the kill is lower than that. We're going to take a look inside. Got the rudder out. So we're going to inspect the hole right there. Now what this is here is the hole that the rudder stock, also what I've been calling the rudder rod, would have come down out of and went into a recessed circular place in the keel at the very end of it for the rudder to sit, for the rudder stock to sit down into. And this, which I'm happy to see, is some sort of metal. It might be a bronze or a brass. It might even be copper, just some sort of metal to protect the inside here, the wood, so that the worms, uh, Torito worms, can't get to and eat and cause damage. But this, this whole timber here is going to have to be replaced. Um, this section here, well, this section here, here, and here is going to have to be replaced. This section is definitely going to have to be replaced. It will. And so this one right here and this one right here. But I'm very happy to see that this is here to help protect the wood from those uh, nasty Torito worms. And this here is the hole that I was talking about that the rudder stock were sat down into like this. And there was a fitting around here so that you could turn the rudder like that. And this fitting was a little hard to get off of the rod itself. I have filmed taking the rudder off what goes into that and I have filmed taking the stock out but for the purpose of this video that footage is not going to be in here it will be in a separate video on, as a how to uh, so let's go back up top and let's examine the We see some things here right away that start talking about down below and that is this is the position in the horn timber this being the horn timber where the rudder stock came up through and it's got some worm damage up here at the top and uh, it's never had a tube put down through here at the top to protect it so the worms have gotten at it and it's in a little bit of bad condition now some boats if the worm damage wasn't too bad you could put a block of wood up here put a block of wood at the top, maybe another one at the bottom, and uh, then put a tube through it connected to the stuffing box. You could have the bottom of the stuffing box removed and then have a recess machine uh, connect a tube to it and weld it, and then it would protect that down in there. And you could thread the other end of the tube and put a gland nut at the end at the very bottom and that's possibly what's going to happen here it's in better condition than I thought it would be I'm going to probe this here and it's in really good condition still as I get for further forward here it has some problems and it's caused by electrolysis and what happens is in a situation like this is H2O, pure H2O, doesn't conduct electricity, but when you have minerals in it, which in this case is the salt, the ions and the minerals conduct the electricity, and it's a cathode anode situation, and the electrons migrate from one piece of metal to another piece of metal, from the less noble, noble metal to the more noble metal, and what it does is it makes the salt in the water break down and when it does, it breaks down into a hydrochloric acid a solution in the water and sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is lye, and it burns pretty much anything it comes into contact with. And what it's done here 
its turn where the screws were in, the moisture content in the wood to lie, or alkaline, and it's burned the ligament out of the wood. And what the ligament is, is the glue that holds the fibers together inside the wood. So what you have here is the fibrous content of the wood, but it has no lignin left. So a piece of the horn timber is reasonably compromised. And some of this is from alkaline damage and it's not rot, it's from alkaline damage from water being in the bilge. And if you notice as I start to put these fastenings back into their respective holes, you'll notice that the stuffing box had been put in at an angle. Why it was put in at an angle, I don't know. But that's something I'm going to fix. I'm going to fill those holes back up. I'm going to fix the top of the wood right there. And I'm going to drill new holes for the fastenings to go down into. And so that the stuffing box will be put into the hole straight. And so that the rudder stock will come up evenly. And of course it's not that it's not even already. But... I just don't like it being in there at a diagonal like that because it just it just doesn't float my boat, no pun intended. And that piping that is red, faded, red, faded, burgundy, whatever color you want to call that, uh, underneath my right hand is actually the wet exhaust pipe. And that will be coming out once I tear the deck up and... Uh, there's a few frames under there that I'm going to have to do replacing to. I'm not going to do sister framing. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be actually replacing the framing. I'm going to make it solid again. Uh, one of the uh, structural framings that runs the length up underneath the transom right there. Holding that piece up. It's going to be replaced. But that's all a simple replacement and it's going to be rather easy and quick to do it's just a matter of cutting the pattern out and then fitting it in there and if you look over there to the left of the uh, hatch opening you see a rod and at the very end it's like a brownish color with some uh, gray in the middle that is actually part of the steering the tiller arm for the rudder stock was connected to that and it's rusted and all you can actually look at it until it's uh, bent at a diagonal a little bit but that'll be replaced because it'll be getting new hydraulic steering and this boat's don't have all new stuff put on it all new wiring cables steering all that good stuff because i want it done right and i want her to have the best all right so what we got here are the sides just below the gunnels and I just wanted to show you all this on some stuff this is part of the inspection and you see all that rust going down especially that real long one right there and you see those uh, horizontal pieces of wood and then the one right there that well right there excuse me where it goes uh, up and what that's for that's bracing for uh, the gunnels but what that right there is for was for the benches to sit on top of and all that's going to be gone I'm going to replace that with new and uh, but I'm just going to pan the camera here let me loosen this up so that it does pan correctly the way I want it to so we're just going to pan this way so y'all can kind of see this and all the rust right there that is either from Iron fastenings that's never been replaced. And electrolysis has happened. Or it's from brass and br or bronze uh, fastenings and electrolysis has taken place. And that wood is actually still in really good condition. I'll actually go and probe that for y'all now. I'll do it over here. So as you can see, it's still hard it's just rusted and some of the well this is the fastenings are and the wood is still in decent condition i might actually keep that i don't know yet it depends on me pairing the gunnels apart and everything 
when I take them and shorten them back. It'll depend. These right here, they ain't gonna stay. And you notice I just moved that. I had to knock that loose so I could take the benches out. But it's still in pretty good shape. And so we'll just see when I cross that bridge. And if you notice here, all this will be changed. Uh, I'm on, it's got two fuel tanks, one on each side. I'm going to cut the ends of them off, combine them into one, put it in the middle. And you'll have one long access door in the middle, like in the movie, to get to the uh, gas tank. And then you'll have two lockers on the side to put various things, such as a bill pump and all those fun, neat things. We're just going to take a little prod in here as well this is a uh, still good so this will probably stay as well but well take the back it's not gonna stay because I might have to fix all this the way that I want it so here my lavalier might cut out again because it was starting to die and basically all I was saying here was explaining you know what was going to come next in a part five and I will be examining the engine and I might even take y'all up on top on top of the uh, cabin top roof which I can't use because it's going to be torn down and the cabins don't be widened which means the guns will be shortened but I'm going to be going into that and and I'll also be taking y'all down below to the lower cabin and showing y'all uh, an inspection down there and going over everything and what's going to be done and explain what I'm going to be doing down there what I'm going to be changing what I'm going to be adding and because of the fact that we never really see but a small glimpse of the lower cabin I have a little bit more of creative freedom of what to do with it down there and I've got some plans that I've uh, been thinking about doing and unless between now and the time I get ready to start doing the lower cabin, if pictures or video ever comes out of what the Orca's actual lower cabin look like, then I'll adjust my plans to uh, keep that accurate as well. But until then, I will be doing pretty much my own little design layout down there. Also, what I'm saying is that I hope y'all uh, y'all come back and uh, like and subscribe and Hope that y'all get to watch and be a part of this journey with me. So as always, guys, y'all come back.